Hello third year, welcome to another series of lessons. We are continuing on with our properties of substances and today we are going to be looking at solubilities. Now, our learning intentions are to define the terms solvent and solute and to investigate the solubility of ionic and covalent compounds. At the end of the lesson, I would hope that you'd be able to explain the difference between solvents and solutes and be able to predict whether a solute will dissolve in a solvent based on the bonding involved. So let's start with a definition for solubility. So solubility is a substance's ability to dissolve in another substance. Now, usually we talk about a solid substance dissolving in a liquid such as water. So before we move on, solubility is how well a substance can dissolve in another substance. And when we're talking about solubility, we usually mean a solid dissolving in a liquid. And that liquid is usually water. Now, a solution is made from a liquid known as a solvent and the solvent does the dissolving. The dissolved substance is also known as the solute and this is a substance that dissolves. So we can make a solution by dissolving a solute and a solvent. So your solvent is the liquid and your solute is what you are dissolving. So your solute dissolves and the solvent is what causes your substance to dissolve. Now there's nowhere in the notes for you to write this down. So what I suggest doing is taking a heading in your daughter, solubility, and taking down this note here where we have our definition of solubility and this one here. There's no need to draw the diagram at the bottom, just make sure you have a copy of these notes. So let's have a quick think. Can you name some everyday solutes and their solvents? So in kind of day-to-day -day life, have you ever used a liquid to dissolve a solid? Have you ever dissolved something? And can you think of some solvents that aren't water? Have you ever had to dissolve something or remove something and used a liquid other than water to do it? So have a think, pause if you have to, come up with some solutes and solvents, have a think about some solvents that aren't water and then we'll move on. So, I've come up with a few such as nail varnish and nail varnish remover, waterproof mascara and makeup remover, Sugar and water, a lot of us will have sugar in our tea. Many of us will have had issues removing waterproof mascara. Sometimes it will not budge unless you have a very good makeup remover. Nail varnish requires acetone, nail varnish remover, to take it off. We've also got dilute and juice and water. Gloss paint and turpentine, or paint stripper. Sharpie ink and alcohol. Now, from personal experience, when I was at uni, I was working in a group and we had a whiteboard per group, quite a big whiteboard per group, and we were given out pens to write on the whiteboard. Now, I did not pick up a whiteboard pen I picked up a Sharpie and I didn't realise that I'd written all over this whiteboard in Sharpie until the whiteboard was covered in writing and I tried to remove a bit 
to make space for another note and it wouldn't budge. Me being me, completely panicked. However, a quick thinking lecturer said not to worry about it and from nowhere, from nowhere, this lady conjured some alcohol and we rubbed it on a cloth and the alcohol with the cloth on the cloth with the alcohol on it managed to rub the board completely clean like there'd never been alcohol there. Like there'd never been Sharpie there in the first place. We also have salt and water, so as you're going to see in a little bit, salt will dissolve in water fairly easily. So if we were in class, we would be taking part in a short practical activity. Your aim would be to determine the solubility of ionic and covalent substances in aqueous and non-aqueous solvents. So an aqueous solvent would be water. A non-aqueous solvent would be a liquid or a solvent that's not water. We would be taking a very small quantity, potentially half a spatula, of each of our solids and we would be adding that to about two centimetres cubed of solvent in a test tube. Unfortunately, we can't do that at the minute, but what we are going to do is we're going to watch a really short video of Miss McPherson attempting to do a very brief version of this experiment in our kitchen. And here is a video. So, what I have here is a glass of water. I'm going to demonstrate by swirling it around there. It is water, I promise, took it straight out the tap. I also have salt. Now, table salt is sodium chloride. Now, being made from sodium and chlorine, Sodium chloride is going to be an ionic compound. I'm taking a tablespoon of my salt, a teaspoon even. And I'm going to add it to my water. I'm going to give it a stir. And you can see the salt rising from the bottom up into the water. And what you are going to see, now I, I took my stirring very seriously here, is that the salt completely dissolves in the water. You know that the salt's dissolved in it because the water is no longer colourless. It's got a bit of a white tint to it but you can see that it has dissolved. You can't see any of the salt particles anymore because they're dissolved in the water. Now next up what I take out is I take out some Lurpak. Now Butter is a form of hydrocarbon. It's made, I take it back, stop. Okay, so next out what I take is butter. Butter is made from carbon, hydrogen and oxygen atoms. It's a covalent substance. I'm going to add this covalent substance to the water and we will see if it dissolves. Now, as I add the spoon in, what happens is the butter either likes to stick to my spoon or stick to the side of the glass because the water is repelling it. The water doesn't like it. It repels it, wants it out and it is not dissolving at all. In this instance, I've taken my butter and I've added it to oil. Now, oil is a non-aqueous solution. It is also made of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. And as I stir the butter around, you can see it's starting to break apart and it is beginning to dissolve. Now, if I were to have left this longer, if I'd left it in more oil, it would have fully dissolved. As I keep spinning, you can see that the butter is getting slightly smaller, parts are breaking off, and it is starting to dissolve. I promise that it is. So 
as I said, if I'd added more oil, left it longer, the butter would have completely dissolved. And I really go for it. I really do try and press my point home. But there just was not enough oil in the glass compared to the amount of butter I had. So I moved on to salt. Now again, salt's an ionic compound. Oil's a non-aqueous solution. So I'm getting my teaspoon of salt again. And I'm adding it to my oil. Now, here we can see that the, oil, the salt has simply dropped straight to the bottom of the oil. When I stir it, it disturbs it at the bottom and it brings it off the surface of the glass. However, when I stop stirring, you can see all the particles fall back down to the bottom because the salt does not dissolve in the oil. So, here is what your job is. In the lab, we would have been using sodium chloride and copper sulfate as ionic substances and salol and camphor as our covalent compounds. Given what we've just watched, which is my sodium chloride dissolving in water but not oil, and my butter, which is covalent, not dissolving in water, but dissolving in the non-aqueous solution. What do you think sodium chloride, copper sulfate, salol, camphor will dissolve in? Do you think they'll all dissolve in water? Only some of them will dissolve in water? All in a non-aqueous? Some in a non-aqueous? So use the information from the video before and the, what I was saying to you to fill in the table and come up with a conclusion. To help you with that, I have a summary page. So water is known as an aqueous solvent. Other solvents such as acetone, nail varnish remover and turpentine, paint stripper, are known as non-aqueous solvents. Solutes that dissolve in water, so our ionic compounds, will be insoluble in non-aqueous solvents. Now we saw that in my salt dissolving in water, but not in my oil. And solutes that dissolve in non-aqueous solvents will be insoluble in water. And we demonstrated that with butter not dissolving in water, and we began to see it dissolving in a non-aqueous oil solvent. So here is what you should do moving forwards. You should already be able to explain the difference between solvents and solutes and you should be able to predict whether a solute will dissolve in a solvent based on the bonding involved. So you should have been able to see that ionic substances will dissolve in water but not non-aqueous solutions and that covalent substances will dissolve in non-aqueous solutions but not water. So your job for the rest of this period, the rest of this session, is to complete your five question quiz, which basically brings all the information from this lesson together. And there is a note page assignment for you to complete. Now there's no notes for this lesson in the pupil booklet. So what I've done is I've put together a very short lab report. Now you don't have to do the lab report yourself. It's all there for you. You're going to fill in the blanks for the aim. You're going to tell me in the method section what precautions you should take when carrying out this experiment yourself. The results table, I've already shown you it. That will be there. You fill that out and you come to a conclusion based on what you've learned in this lesson and what you've predicted in your results table. When all that is done, that is solubility of substance completed. Remember, if you have any questions, if you're not 100% sure, 
quite what was going on here, then it is absolutely okay to get in touch with either myself or Mrs Gimes or your own class teacher. Ask questions, make sure we understand and try our best to get the exercises for this lesson completed. Thanks for tuning in guys and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!